It was one thing that really set it off in motion for me was when a couple of my niggas invited me out to play ball. There was a dispute going on, some just some beef in the community where I was living at. A couple of niggas ran up on me and I came home and I was mad because like the niggas who I thought was supposed to be riding for me. Looking back at the footage now, you know, you can kind of see where lines get crossed, but I was mad at the point. I'm thinking, why are these niggas filming and shit? Niggas came here with, a, with an agenda, right? So I'm um, half Scotian, half Jamaican, born in Ontario. Um, and I um, started making music when I was around 10, 12. My grandfather gave me a guitar and um, I started writing songs. And from there, I kind of took it up a notch and then transitioned into high school. I got into a little bit of trouble and I had to put a pause on the music. And then, um, I was sort of lost and I didn't know what to do with myself. So I started writing again and it kind of just blossomed from there. I was kind of trying to fit in um, in high school and I, I was lost. I was, I was always moving around and shit, doing what I knew how to do, kicking freestyles in the cafeteria. And eventually I kind of gained some traction and got to a point where it was like on lunch. We had like half the cafeteria just circled around. I used to bring this big ass Bluetooth speaker and had like half the cafeteria around, but I was just kicking freestyles. And then from then I was like, okay, I seriously, I, I want to do this. So I had this little secondhand dingy laptop back in elementary. I bought myself like a blue snowball when they were going for like 150 or something. I saved up my money. And it's, it's not a super good mic, but that's what I could afford. And um, I started learning how to mix myself. So I had Audacity and I had like this pirated version of Antares, which is a auto-tune software. And um, I was going around trying to like get people on the wave, like, yo, we should start rapping. Like, you know, I didn't really feel like anybody was like at my level, but I just didn't want to go into like this shit myself. So I was like, yo, we should, we should start rapping. And then um, I had a dispute with my dad and all this shit, he wiped all this shit off my laptop. So from then I was like, oh, shoot. And um, again, I was back at square one, but then that kind of, that hard reset kind of just inspired me to go a little bit, a little bit further. And um, I remember um, just back, I think it was in the summer or no, right before the pandemic started, um, I was sort of trying to get back into this this style and trying to find my sound. And um, there's a lot of different inspiring factors along the way, but it was one thing that really set it off in motion for me was when um, a couple of my niggas invited me out to play ball. And um, there was a dispute going on, some just some beef in the community where I was living at. And um, a couple of niggas ran up on me and I came home and I was mad. Cause like the niggas who I thought was supposed to be riding for me. Looking back at the footage now, you know, you can kind of see where lines get crossed, but I was mad at the point. I'm thinking, why are these niggas filming and shit? Niggas came here with a with an agenda, right? So I took that audio um, from the from the fight. I put it in a song and I went into this this closet. I had the, the other computer that I had broke. So I was using the school assigned Chromebook and I brought it into the, into a closet, not a walk-in, just like a stand-up. And then I put the Chromebook on the top shelf and I closed the door. So I was just like in there hot as hell. It was middle of summer, had the mic in my hand and um, I just started spitting like, and it was hot. So I had to do it just one take cause I wasn't trying to go back in. Spat it out, did the, did the ad libs and everything. And then um, I, I took the audio from the fight from the Snapchat video that was circulating. I put it in the beginning of the song and I dropped it the same day when I got home. And so that was the first time I ever hit a thousand, a thousand plays on, on SoundCloud, which was like the only platform I was using at the time. And then from there, I was like, wow, like I could really do this shit like properly, like it's not too hard. And then from there went on and I did the self-titled EP, which was just an experimental thing. I was trying different things, was done like two, three months, just 
me riding wherever I could. I remember riding a song in a in a Burger King drive through And then, um, yeah, after that, that got some good reviews. I was seeing what people were responding to. And then the first serious, serious tape, because there was two tapes before that, first serious EP was Hamartia, which was just a collective effort. Um, me and a couple of my other artistic friends, we just kind of like threw this together. And it was just a bunch, of, a combination of songs that were just like, they just speak volumes about who I am. And um, yeah, first time I did a music video was for that. And then from there, it was just like, okay, how do I keep them focusing? How do I keep them focusing on me? How do I keep doing this shit? So I started, yeah, I started when I was around 10. So prior to, to getting the guitar from my grandfather, I, um, I was actually in like primary school, like grade two, three, four, five, doing like using like online free software beats to like uh, to make our or softwares to make like these beats in the in the back of the class i'm getting in trouble for that um but then yeah so i got this guitar and i was like i don't know ed sheeran was popular at the time so i'm like okay i start serenaded girls and shit so um i don't know how to play guitar and I, frankly i don't like i don't like the guitar <laughs> it hurts my fingers but yeah i made this little two chord song my grandfather heard it he's a recording artist in jamaica so he flew me out and um we uh he he has a, a little studio took me there helped me with the vocals um helped me with the background vocals everything we laid down a proper instrumental it's the first thing i ever did S song sorry i ever did um and it's somewhere i'm not gonna tell you where but it's somewhere and um yeah that's that's when i first started i kind of grew up in a musical home my mom's a human jukebox. My dad was a DJ. Um, my grandfather, like I said, he was a super, super big recording artist. So before I was into the stuff that I spit, what was only being played was like R&B, soul. And then it was old school hip hop, like special ed, slick rick, all that stuff. So it was really, you know, the foundations of the sounds that you're hearing today that I'm getting directly from the source. And then that's just why I feel that I spit different. I'm trying to be recognized for the talent that I know that I have, like beyond just talking on my ass and spin, spin the shit. Like I want to go down, not as a rapper, but as an artist, like I try to keep it consistent, but always maintain that sort of flow switch, the, the differences in my music. And, um, yeah, I, I don't want to be known as like this nigga from Ontario or this nigga from the GTA or whatever. Like, I want to be international. Like, I want to do it like, <laughs> like rap for the decade type shit. I said fucking on a boat with some seafood. I don't even like seafood and I don't like boats, but. I see myself just living, living lavish because I feel like I deserve it. I mean, I have it in me. And it's beyond that, it's not even that's what I'm going for. It's just like the music is all I've ever wanted to do. And it's all that's stuck with me through everything that I've been through, everything that I persevered through. So it's just a part of me and it's something that I want to give back. And I, I just want to be like, like somewhere crazy, somewhere crazy, somewhere, I, somewhere I can't even think of being right now. Tokyo, just in a in a ramen joint, just chilling. I don't know. <laughs> Stick, <laughs> stay true to yourself, cause niggas are always gonna try to hop on trends, hop on flows, hop on styles. And the thing about that is there's always going to be a set cap. You'll only go as far as the trendsetter or you'll only get right underneath them because you're not even being original, right? Don't try to, you know, stray too far. But I think if you're true to yourself, you're never going to be wrong. You're never going to put out something that's, you know, music is, in, is interpretive. It's relative. 
So as long as you're spitting your truth, what what the fuck can somebody say to you? And there's nothing better that there's nothing that feels better than releasing something that you truly feel the world needs to hear. So, and as and as long as you do that, like you're set. Quasi is that nigga. Quasi is the embodiment of just generations of swag. And he can't be stopped. One take Quasi. I get in and I get it done and I leave. That's always what it is. It's because I always know what I want to do and I always knew that this is what I wanted to do. So it's no obstacles for me. Like, it's always gonna stay <laughs> I don't know it's always gonna be this is forever I'm I'm gonna be here forever the whole reason I'm trying to do this or why I started doing this was I wanted to leave a legacy didn't want to leave the earth but I was something here that that kind of you know represented who I am and so yeah I spit like it's the last time I'm gonna spit every single time I don't really, I don't really have a genre or like, I feel like my, my shit is just borderless, but yeah, yeah, like it, I spit whatever I feel like in that moment at that time, I write it down. There's more songs sometimes I get in and I get into that move and I, I just write as much as I can and I just go to a next vibe, but like I spit ignorant, like that part is consistent through all my music, like generally my attitude is don't give a fuck won't give a fuck and i'm just gonna keep spitting and then i kind of <laughs> i'm a little disrespectful I'm, I'm pretty disrespectful in my music and that's something that's that's something that's generally consistent over all the music um and sometimes it's a little challenging to keep that consistent but at the same time it's not because what's what's more challenging is is being nice it's kind of natural, so, yeah.